Shalom, beloved. A word. There's an unholy narrative trying to play itself as being part of a faithfulness that it is not. It has never been. It is an unholy narrative. It is a narrative that leads them to acquire that which was never theirs. It is a narrative that sacrifices people. It is an unholy narrative. And it is told in such a way that it mixes truth and lies and tries to make you believe it is like you when it is the total opposite. Whether I speak on the murderous rampage in Buffalo, New York, whether I speak on the murderous rampage with those school students, the unholy narrative. There is an unholy narrative being pushed as though it is a faithful narrative when in fact you're dealing with people with seared consciences. You're dealing with politicians that want to say the right words and yet these are the same people that pocket the money that should have created a secure situation that these instances should have never occurred in the first place. It's an un holy narrative being forwarded as though it is God fearing and God centered. It is a faithless faith that is forwarded as though it has some faithfulness. What do I mean? You've got a system that is an unholy narrative. They even listen to brothers and sisters that put out uh, different tapes and videos and speak on it. And they use the words to try to reel you in this, this faithless faith that they have that shows you it's an unholy narrative. What do I mean? It goes beyond Buffalo, God bless and rest their souls. It goes beyond the little beautifuls down there in that school that got shot up by a crazy one. Why? He was inundated with an unholy narrative, assimilated into something in his mind of faithless faith, if you will, the same way with the one in Buffalo, but it's deeper than that. It's stronger than that. It's gone on longer than that, beloved. It is an unholy narrative, a faithless faith. It speaks faith when it sounds right, but it has no feet. It has no teeth. There's no meat on that bone. Yes, yes, yes. We're talking about, Lord, because there's a war over there. We, we, we gonna bring in all the little tentacles of it because there's a war over there. The prices somehow go up over here. Why? Because it is wanton. It is an unholy narrative. It, it benefits and prospers from the suffering of others. And if you look at its origin, its genesis, if you will, it has always done so. Why? Because they honor the creature more than the creator. They try to give off a semblance of some spirituality. Everybody wants to pray. Everybody wants to kneel because this is what they've heard the people say. But the difference between those who sit high and looking low, no, I'm not talking about the almighty. I'm talking about wickedness in high places that sit high and look low. They know they have created an unholy narrative. They've pocketed all the money, the methods, and the means that could have kept many of these things from happening. And yet they sit back and tell you how shocked they are, but they're running on an unholy narrative. It's not about you. It's not about me. You've got politicians that the only thing they care about is how much money do I have in the bank? How much power can I get? How much can I wield? You're not for the people. You're not even by the people. You're not even of the people. Because you see, when you look at this great mixing bowl that we're in, if you will, you don't see the people. What you see is a updated rendition of us, the same old, same old, trying to blend in and look like a faithful thing when it's a faithless, faithful thing. It's faithful to its faithlessness. Why? Because it runs on an 
holy narrative of greed and wanting this. Yes, yes, the war over there will make me make money over here. I'm going to starve out babies and say there's no formula on the shelves because I can make a dollar because that's what the unholy narrative has always done. I'll run the prices up and swear that it's because something's wrong over there. It created wrong over here. And yet I'll give away billions while others here starve and can't pay their bills because I want to look faithful. Although I'm unfaithful, it's a faithless faith. Okay, it's running on an unholy narrative. How can these so-called unholy narrators care when they make billions off of movies and shows that celebrate violence, glorify violence, glorify any immoral act? And yet, if we use the right words at the right time, because you'll believe us, although they are speaking out of both sides of their neck, Okay, this faithless faith that they claim to have. No, 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 no. They'll even use it as a pun now. You've got people using puns about the death and murder of innocence because they figure it'll give them bigger ratings. These unholy narrators. Yes, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. Forgive me. I need a moment. I'm going to turn my fan because I'm getting hot. Okay, but I hope you can still hear me. You're dealing with an unholy narrative. You're dealing with the imposter, if you will. And what do I mean? Those of us who are truly under the hand of the most high know you're dealing with something carnal, something terrestrial, something physical. It thinks only in the now and it doesn't understand the later. It doesn't understand the price that they're going to have to pay when they stand before that eternal judgment. Although they see it every day, they don't believe somehow they're excused. I don't care if they don't believe in the word, then they believe in karma. They believe in comic justice, but somehow they figure they'll be excused knowing they got a hand in why this is going on. See, we need to get gun control. No, no, no. You got to go all the way to the top if you want this thing to stop. But they have no intentions in making it stop. They are faithless faith. They got an unholy narrative. You got people spewing division and racism against a people that have been stuck here for 400 years. You wonder why didn't those police go into that school when that young boy, that man, because you see, if if it were their children in another school, okay, whose names weren't Rodriguez and Ramos and Julio and Maria, if it weren't those people, you see, they that came through the walls. They that came through the walls. It's a nun holy narrative. How can a cop hold parents off from saving their most beloved, their children? Because you're running on an unholy narrative of faithless faith, claiming to care when your actions, historically and currently, tell a whole nother story. Right now, they keep trying to use fear mongering to get everybody in line. You got monkeypox, you got COVID going, you got food shortage, you got fuel shortage. I said food and fuel. Okay, whatever it takes, we're going to raise these prices, line our pockets, keep the people paranoid while we run our unholy narrative. Okay, while all the while telling you, we care. We care. It's a seared conscience. It's a seared conscience. You got evil spiritual forces in high places. Yes, beloved, in high places. They sit on media sites thinking they are exempt while they put other people's lives as nothing. It's nothing, okay? It's an unholy narrative. You see, you're dealing with a physical carnal people. And this world, this system, is so morally bankrupt. The only religion they have is money, greed, wantonness, okay? But that faithless faith, pretending to be that which they never were, 
and never will be. We are in a state of emergency. The earth, the, the, the evil that has been done has unleashed a curse, but the curse that it is unleashed is actually self-correcting. It's cleaning up what they messed up and is doing it in such a way that they can't stop it. They have no control. You got a narcissistic uh, uh, colonization, imperialistic thought pattern going on. It's a narcissistic group that they're running on an unholy narrative. They have no real emotion for people. That's how, you know, food grows prolifically. I don't care what the media man paid millions of dollars tells you. Food grows prolifically. You can spend billions and send it to a group of people on the other side of the ocean, but you can't spend billions right here at home to correct things. You can't grow enough food to bring the prices down. They didn't create food. They, they have removed the farmers, the Hebrews, who when they were growing food, they let the people go hungry. They, they, they wouldn't subsidize them. They wouldn't help them the same, but yet they'll tell you there ain't no food. We're trying to help you. No, 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 no. You're running on an unholy narrative. You got wicked spirits in high places. You know, in second Baruch, it talks about demons being loose during these days when the curses go out. Demons are loose. You, the unholy narrative has been spread so strong that you got young people don't know who Yahuwah is, who God is. You've got toys and games that teach murder and violence and yet that one and when I say that one I'm not talking about one president because that one doesn't stay that one when I say that one I'm talking about those who control the unholy narrative the faithless so-called faith that they have okay you make billions off of toys and video games that teach mass murder and you don't know why this is going on. You talk against one group or, and another group, one group's history, you want to erase it, you want to remove it, you want to manipulate it. Why? You know, when you think about it, it's exactly the same as it was, or at least that's the intent. What do I mean? When we came here, they tried to erase our history. We want to look good. If looking good means make us the good guy and you the bad guy or neutralize your story into nothingness, we'll do that. Why? Because we want to create an unholy narrative. The truth is of no value to them, but you got to remember Yahuwah is the truth and the truth will set you free. You're dealing with an unholy narrative. It's like looking at a plastic flower, looking at a fake flower. I don't care what type of materials they use, how well spun it is. They can use false fragrances on it. It will never have the power of the true flower, the one that has that transformative position that comes from the most high. We were endued with that power. Yes, yes, yes. When you look at the book of Jubilee, and Abraham was talking to Jacob, and he was telling Jacob the same blessing that Yahuwah put on Adam, the same blessing that he put on Noah, the same blessing that he put on Abraham. He said, let it be on you, Jacob, and all your descendants. Well, one of the things that the faithful need to understand, that blessing, you can't learn it from a unholy narrative or faithless, faithful person, somebody who claims faith, but doesn't really have any. What do I mean? You have people that walk around and say, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things yet to be seen. Yes, it is. But when you use it as a statement and not as a lifestyle to allow your spirit to grow and bloom, what do I mean? Yes, you, let's use faith and that blessing that Abraham told Jacob about. Let's, let's, let's use faith and the blessing, bring them together. And we're going to compare it to the fake flower up against the real flower. You see that faith, that faith, 
You might see the flower when it first breaches the earth and all you see is a blade and think, oh, that's all it is. I can't work with that. But that faith, that thing that gets watered, that gets the sun, that sun, that word of God, that power of God. Then you come back and it's a stem. Then you come back and it got leaves on it. Then you come back yet again and it's blooming flowers, but the petals have a design on them. When you look at the fake flower, you can't learn math, but if you watch the leaves on a real flower, it's got geometric positions and patterns that literally teach you just the leaf. Now we come in to the flower. And you look at the way it grows and blooms and opens up and the scent and the aroma, and then you see a bee come your back up and he dips inside and you're wondering, well, what is this bee doing? But you see it gathered around your flowers at certain times of the day. I'm talking about the real boy, because you see the difference between faithless faith and true faith is it has a multiplier, it changes, it, it redesigns itself within itself because it's not one dimensional. When you're dealing with carnal, when you're dealing with physical, you're dealing with a one dimension. Why? Because it's a faithless faith. It's an unholy narrative. It's not the real deal. It's the imposter, if you will. You see the bee come to the flower. You don't even know what he's doing. Then you notice these bees hanging out over there. You get there and you're like, what is this stuff these bees are making they messing with my flowers and they go over there suddenly you find this waxy substance and the next thing you know you break it open and you got honey but you see here's the difference between a false flower that unholy narrative that faithless faith and the true faith it is not faith that you encapsulate and it doesn't have any growth inside of it. It, it, it. it changes, it rearranges, it restructures, it opens your mind. You're looking at the leaf and seeing patterns you never saw before and suddenly geometry is opened up to you just looking at the design on the leaf. Then you look at the flower and you realize, you know, some of them, they open at night. They don't open during the day. Some open during the day and close at night. Some give off their scent in the mornings, attracting those bees. Some give off their scents in the evening and night. Some of them one day you think, oh, I stepped on that fake flower, that faithless faith. Hmm. That thing broken with no more good. You step on a real flower thinking, oh my God, I broke it, the stem broke. I don't know what to do, let me pull it off. You walk away, you come back another day, and where there was one, now there's eight. Why? Because unbeknownst to you, you prune that thing, and it's got life in it. That's that blessing he put on Abraham. But we're sitting here looking at a nation, a group of people, this imperialistic, physical, carnal, unholy narrative that there's nothing that's gonna grow this positive from it. It's wanting, it wants what it doesn't have and never was. And if it can't have what it doesn't have and never was, it wants to stop those that do so that you never understand who you are or what you're capable of. Faithless faith, beloved. This thing is dying. You've got nations throwing off the colonizers. Yes, yes, yes. You've got nations throwing off the colonizer. But you see, you got to start right here in your mind. You got to start in your spirit. What we're looking at, whether you're talking about the guns, they want to they wanna play the magic Houdini on you. We got to get rid of the guns. No, 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 no. You got to get rid of the bullets. You got to get rid of the people that's making crazy money. You know, when the war go on, some people, they profit a lot. You think people ain't profiting right now? And the war ain't even here. You think people ain't profiting right now? You think you ain't being lied to? I'm amazed. There's enough money to send billions that away, to send weapons of war that away, but they can't even secure the streets right here at home. As a matter of fact, I tell you how deep that faithless faith, that unholy narrative get. They'll go into a neighborhood, look a lot like yours, look a lot like mine, and take the homes of others and then rent them back to them for profit. Uh, you know, that gentrification, the ripping off of a nation. Really, you're looking at a 
neo-colonialism or neo-colonization still going on before your eyes? How is it that you got police officers that refuse to go into the school and save those children? Mm, but they'll blow your brains out unarmed in the middle of the street. Faithless faith, beloved. You have to recognize it's an unholy narrative. You've got people sitting up on news looking like a fox, tucking their lies in their teeth, trying and stirring up people to go out here and commit murder, commit murder. And because they making millions in their bank account, because they got millions in their bank account, they think it's okay to say what they will. Mm -mm. A putrid, unholy system. God ain't in it. God ain't got nothing to do with it. And God, we trust. The question is, what God you trust in? Because it is not the true most high. There's nothing holy about the behaviors of what's going on in here. And they prep you for it. Pretty soon, there'll be short food shortages. Pretty Anytime they don't have baby food, oh, God, the prices is going up. The product is going down. Supply and demand is off the Richter scale. Faithless faith, unholy, wanton, faithless faith, beloved. But you are the true plan. You are the true. You are on that vine. Let me tell you. I'm watching. You see, I'm going to use another example. I'm still hot because this is on my head. I think I'm going to turn the air conditioner on. Bear with me. Bear with me. Be patient. I'm just getting hot, beloved. Here's the difference between the faithless faith. See, when you have the eyes of the most high, he opens your eyes up. We're children of the light. What's that mean? Illumination. We see the darkness and see through it because we are our father's children. We are made in his image. That creativity. We're sitting here watching all of this. It's the cleanup coming along, baby. It's the cleanup, whether we're talking about the weather, whether we're talking about the eve. Okay. Yahoo is going to bring us out. It is time for this unholy narration to be removed. It's going on worldwide. These nations who are tired of being under, being under an unholy narrative, a narrative that never even had God in them because a lot of the evils that were done would have never been done. It is wanton, it is greedy, and it is unholy. There are demons being unleashed. You know there's violence out here. It's, it's put out there every day, whether it's in a movie, whether it's in a video, whether it's in a child's game. All of this murder, mayhem, and monsters. The earth is tired. And you know, there's something very humbling in another truth. He's sending floods and hurricanes and tornadoes and fires. I don't think the most high, matter of fact, I know that. He don't care how much money you got in your bank account. He don't care what your position is. It's amazing how fast he can take it away. And the earth is balancing itself. You got one guy, Elon Musk, with billions. He running around tripping because of the, uh, what do you call it? The birth rate. <laughs> Talking about it be the end of civilization. I'm trying to understand when was any of what is going on civilized? When was any of this civilized? We got an education system that's ripped off, robbed, and run into the ground. Everybody knows it, but we're going to send billions over there. You got a billionaire that wants you to listen to him as though he had some type of mental dexterity to uh, input wisdom and knowledge on the people. He going to fly out and out of space instead of taking care of business right here at home. I don't care how far you go up, you got to come down. Faithless faith, beloved. Wicked spiritual forces in high places. You've got people over in Africa wanting France to get out, get out. You know, I understand that. This unholy narrative called Give me what's yours, and in turn, I give you what I'm willing to give you. And my culture, which is no culture, is the only culture you get. And now, one of the cultures here, which is why everybody going crazy, is we get the culture of somebody that never gave a damn. There's nothing God like about it. 
I don't need to see a demon kneel down and pray and, oh, Lord, suck this off. But you're the reason why all this is going on. You and people like you. You're in the position to make a change, and all you're going to do is some long-winded speech that nobody give a damn about because it's going to be the same old, same old, and everybody go back to what they got to do. Faithless faith. It's faithless faith. But you are the faithful, beloved. You keep praying that the most high tear this wickedness down. If police officers are too scared to run into a school and save your child, and they willing to tear you up, put you on the ground, tase you, let you see their weapon, we'll tear you out the boots. Really? You dealing with an unholy narrative. And it's been going on for a long, long time. You understand? <clears throat> mm, mm, mm. You got to understand the difference, that false flower. There's no life in it. It never wanted life. It never respected life. It's got a seared conscience. And it's teaching it to every child that they can get to, to every young man, every young woman. It's a horror. America's moral compass, it, it's not even broke. It doesn't exist. It's festering. It's fetid. And you got people so stupid, they figure, well, if I got a lot of money, I can separate myself. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. We're seeing it. Hello. It's a hard and terrible thing, but I'm going to go back for a second and talk about Elon Musk. Talking about the end of civilization. I'm like, are you crazy? All these, here's what he's telling you. The people that look like him are diminished. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out when this was civilized to begin with. When was this civilization? I, I, I really need to do a checkup because it wasn't. It wasn't. As a matter of fact, it brings to mind what the Most High's word said, I will make you small among the heathen. You are greatly despised. Your arrogance has deceived you. You know, hmm. faithless faith below. That's what it is. It's just rhetoric. What words can I say? How can I spin this? I know. I listen to other people that are telling the truth, snatch some of their words, use them like they're my words. There's no official you're going to elect that's going to change this. They're looking for pocket money. They're looking for pocket money. They're looking for power. They don't give a damn, and they want the same set system to keep going. That's why it's going on. They're making billions and millions of dollars making deals. But I will say this. The end is near. This thing will not continue. And the one that's got the true hand over it is the most high. He's got a handle. May the Most High have mercy and receive the souls of those little children, as well as the people in Buffalo and all the people brutalized in this country, murdered, those who aren't even dead yet that are being tormented by an unholy narrative. This is an unholy narrative. What culture? What quality? If you're not after me first, if you're not into the me first, I, me, and mine, you're not part of this culture. See, the true culture of the most high, you love your neighbor as yourself. That's not what you're seeing. You're looking at greed, wanting greed. That's what you're looking at. But he's straightening it out. It's a word, beloved. It's not just you. We all see it. You got nations in Africa telling them your opinion, get out. Get out. You got them down there in the Caribbean. That colonial monster is time to go sink to the bottom of the sea, never to rise again. They want to be free so that they can truly follow the ways that they know are right to have a true civilization, not something wanton and grief, faithless faith. Yes, but the word, shalom. Now I have to stop this, so bear with me. Yes. Shalom.